Welcome back. Go ahead and suffocate the like button. Stick around until the end to see our next disturbing story you can't afford to miss. Giant of Kandahar In the rugged terrains of Afghanistan, near the ancient city of Kandahar, a covert unit of elite soldiers embarked on a routine reconnaissance mission. The team, led by Captain James Erickson, was well versed in the dangers of the region, but unprepared for the legend they were about to confront, the Giant of Kandahar. Rumors had circulated among the local populace of a colossal being that roamed the mountains, a remnant of a forgotten age when giants walked the earth. Erickson, a man of logic and reason, dismissed these tales as mere superstition, a way for the locals to make sense of the unexplained. As dusk approached, the unit found themselves in a narrow valley, the walls rising steeply on either side. It was then they heard it, a thunderous footsteps echoing off the stone, growing louder, closer. From the shadows of the towering cliffs emerged the giant, its height dwarfing the tallest soldier, its eyes burning with an ancient malice. Panic set in as the units scrambled to form a defensive position, their rifles seeming pitiful against the enormity of their foe. The giant advanced, unfazed by the gunfire, a roar escaping its lips that shook the very ground beneath their feet. Erickson, realizing the futility of their weapons, ordered a retreat, the team weaving through the boulders and crevices, the giant in relentless pursuit. Their training had prepared them for enemy combatants, not myths made flesh. As they navigated the treacherous terrain, Erickson spotted a series of caves high up on the valley wall, a potential refuge, but one that required a perilous climb. With the giant gaining ground, the team had no choice but to ascend. One by one, they scaled the cliff face, the sound of the giant's approach, a constant reminder of the death that followed. Erickson was the last to climb, his gaze locked on the approaching behemoth, its massive form illuminated by the setting sun. Reaching the cave, the unit found themselves in a network of ancient tunnels, the air thick with dust and the weight of centuries. The entrance offered a precarious safety, the giant's massive frame unable to follow. But as they ventured deeper into the darkness, the realization dawned on Erickson and his team that the cave might not be a sanctuary, but a tomb. The tunnels seemed to stretch into the heart of the mountain, a labyrinth that whispered secrets of a world long forgotten. The sound of the giant's roar faded, replaced by a more subtle but equally terrifying sound, the echo of something moving in the darkness ahead. And as they moved deeper into the bowels of the earth, Erickson understood that the giant of Kandahar was but a guardian, a sentinel protecting the entrance to a realm that was never meant to be disturbed. The true horror lay not in the chase, but in what awaited them in the darkness of the caves. As they delved deeper, the oppressive darkness seemed to thicken, swallowing the weak beams of their flashlights. The air grew colder, a chill that seeped into their bones, a stark contrast to the desert heat they had left behind. The subtle sounds of movement became a constant companion, an unseen entity stalking them within the shadows. Erickson, pushing aside the rising panic, urged his team forward, the weight of leadership heavy on his shoulders. They came upon an ancient chamber, its walls inscribed with symbols that predated any civilization known to man. In the center of the room, a stone altar stood stained with centuries of use, the air around it vibrating with an unseen power. It was then the entity revealed itself, not a creature of flesh and blood, but a specter of malice and vengeance, born from the darkness of the caves. Its form was shifting, a mass of shadows in despair, its eyes glowing with a malevolent light. The soldiers, trained for combat against tangible foes, found themselves facing an enemy that weapons could not harm. The specter spoke in a language that twisted the air, a sound that clawed at their minds, filling them with visions of terror and madness. Erickson realized the giant of Kandahar had not been chasing them, but hurting them, driving them into the heart of an ancient trap a prison meant to contain the darkness now unleashed. In a desperate bid for escape, Erickson and his team fired at the specter, the bullets passing harmlessly through its form. The chamber began to shake, stones falling from the ceiling as the specter's laughter echoed around them, a sound that promised not death, 
but something far worse. With no way forward and the path behind blocked by the collapse, Erickson made a decision. Gathering the last of their explosives, he set a charge, not to defeat the specter, but to bring down the chamber, hoping to bury the entity in the cursed altar for another millennium. As the countdown reached zero, Erickson and his team braced for the explosion, the specters howl a banshee's wail in the confined space. The blast rocked the chamber, and darkness consumed everything. The aftermath left no trace of Erickson and his team, the caves collapsing, sealing the chamber and its horrors beneath tons of rock. The legend of the giant of Kandahar grew, a tale of soldiers who vanished without a trace, swallowed by the desert and its ancient mysteries. And deep within the mountain, the specter waits, its malice undiminished, a horror contained but not destroyed, a dark legacy awaiting the next unwary souls to stumble upon its prison. Let us know what you thought of this story in the comments. Thank you for listening. Join us tomorrow for a new untold story. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more artificial apparitions. And while you're here, go ahead and listen to the next terrifying story on your screen.